Now we'll discuss the importance of hygienic design and layout for a food processor. As we earlier discussed that the food engineering principles they must be followed very strictly in order to avoid future problems and now we will discuss why it is so important and what can be consequences if the design is not having any inbuilt uh, hygiene importance in it. So why it is important as we earlier said that there are large number of incidences that new food safety hazards are coming out, there are new uh, food safety incidences coming out, uh, new foodborne diseases are being discussed. So all these things actually put a lot of pressure on the processor to avoid any chances of having hazard from their food product that could lead to a bad name for the manufacturer as well as the loss of reputation and loss, of, loss in the economy as well and loss of uh, precious lives as well. So in order to have a good quality end product it is very important to have a hygienic design uh, and the layout of the factory is designed in a manner that it facilitates the good hygiene practices. And because these things would increase the capacity uh, and capability of uh, and safety of the process, once they are better designed, the capability can be enhanced to produce safer food products. And if it is not followed, then of course, uh, the capability would be less and chances of having food safety problems would of course arise. So as earlier said that HACCP or GMP methods, they are all maintenance uh, based approaches to avoid happening of any food safety hazard. Uh, but the prevention is also inclusive that we should all so consider the quality of equipment that is used. If we compromise on the quality of equipment that is used in a the processing, then no amount of other efforts in say raw material or having good personnel or other systems, it is not going to help because there is inherent problem with the quality of the equipment used. So that makes it very important that we should start with the good quality equipments. As you also know that every batch have to be followed with certain cleaning and in order to avoid contamination or microbial growth or pathogens, the cleanliness or sanitary practices within a factory premises or within a process is very important. And it is only possible when the design and installation of equipments is done in a nice manner. If there is any problem with the design, then that might hamper the good cleaning. So if we could not clean the uh, premises well, then of course we could not avoid the incidence of problems such as food safety hazards. So appropriate cleaning is very much dependent <clears throat> on how good uh, the installation and how strategically placed are our instruments, equipments and the processing lines. Similarly, uh, for maintenance and production system uh, of uh, any factory or premises, we need to have this uh, good hygienic design. Uh, if we have this hygienic design, then that would lead to diminishing of risk of contamination. So there would be lesser risk of getting your product contaminated again and again if there is a good design. And once we don't have contamination or no excessive microbial growth, that would also mean that the shelf life of end product would be increased. So that would of course lead to good economic benefits to the producer when the shelf life is increased and there's more time for the buyer to purchase that product and there would be lesser wastage and lesser losses. And if we don't have this hygienic design, uh, such as poor hygienic designs, that uh, the system or the equipment can retain these soils or dead areas, uh, then they allow for the growth and hibernation of microorganisms in those areas and then it might become serious like uh, there might be 
incidence of food biofilms, uh, microbial biofilms that are developed within that system, then it becomes very difficult to get rid of these uh, pathogens within the factory settings. And food um, microbial biofilms are a serious concern. So because once they are there, they could multiply, uh, they can cr cross-contaminate all of your food product, and that uh, would be uh, the blame would go back to the poor design of the equipment. And who ultimately suffers if there is an error in the design of these equipments or processes? Uh, it may be equipment manufacturer, uh, it may be food processing client or government or legislative bodies as well, and ultimately the final consumer. They would suffer and the problem could be extended to the end user as well because there may be cases of food poisoning or there may be cases of food safety incidences involving uh, maybe serious disease or deaths as well. For example, this is one example of uh, presence of salmonella that was found in milk powder uh, that led to 76 cases of disease and one event of death uh, back in 1985 in UK. And once the incidence was investigated, it was found that the source of contamination was uh, traced that birds had access to water. So basically in the design, there was not proper closure of water tanks and the birds had access. And the, from birds dropping, the salmonella get into the uh, food system and that led to serious consequences. So this could be one simple example, like how one negligence in any design error can lead to serious problems. So summarizing, if we have to design, again, looking at what are the requirements uh, for making a good hygienic design, uh, it should be minimize the possibility of infestation by uh, insects, birds, animals, microorganisms, and it also be considered that it should uh, not uh, help in accumulation of dust or surface water or condensed water or product anywhere within the factory premises. So if we can make sure that uh, this uh, uh, possibility of infestation from these sources is reduced, then of course we can make sure that the final products are uh, safer for the end users. So they would be actually reducing the risk of contamination in general. So this was the importance of having a hygienic design for equipments as well as for the layout of a factory.